So the Severa GSI needs a clutch point, it's specifically a flywheel. I think the flywheel's got a little bit of a warp on it, it's a little bit of juddery. The clutch has actually been replaced not that long ago. So what we're going to do is actually going to pull off the gearbox. We're going to get this uh, clutch out, going to check it all over. I've got a new clutch, new flywheel to put on it. That's what we're going to do. I weren't going to film this, but I thought I will now because I'm obviously going to do this without a ramp. And I thought it'd be a great idea to show people that you can do a clutch replacement, a gearbox replacement um, without having to be in a proper garage and you can do, um, you know, without a ramp and we can just do it with some jacks and the axle stands and uh, get it up in the air and do it so I'm going to give you a quick run through it's not going to be a, like a proper guide but you'll see enough to be able to do it yourself if you want to do a clutch replacement yourself hopefully this will help you out this is basically what the video is about so let's carry on watching so really first things first obviously get the battery out of the way get the battery out, tray out of the way as well so you can get to that and um, what I've done is I've pulled the auxiliary water pump up that's bolted to the gearbox see that's unbolted everything's out of the way moving the loom out of the way as well just so i can get under here to the two bolts at the top not going to take none of the battery off none of the radiator off going to leave all the water pipes on as well um, this is the only in, uh, gearbox mount that you want to leave attached so underneath obviously you're dropping the subframe off so you're gonna have to take the exhaust off so what i'm just doing now is getting this damn pipe off so i'm just unbolting that now and then you get this mount off at the front and this mount off at the back which is there you can remove that because it will just hang and then the engine obviously is going to come down at an angle at one point so that'd be a slide out of the way obviously this subframe's all coming out now so i've just undone the ball joints as well off of here and before you undo everything you then undo your drive shaft nut which i've just done here as well so everything's loose because they're the highest tensioned ones if you've got a gun it's a lot easier for you um, I just noticed that we've got a split CV gator in there so that'll be replaced at the same time so we're going to drop this whole lot down now um, to do that you will need to take the fuse out of the fuse box for the power steering pump that's the main fuse as well it's the purple one just try and get that out there so that'd be that 80 amp there that you've got to unclip and uh, also unplug this plug here as well and then that will come out and I'll just show you that along the way so when it comes to the hydraulic clutch just so that I ain't hydraulic fluid coming everywhere because it obviously runs off the same as the brake fluid you don't want it draining low just stick a clamp over it it's exactly the same clamp as you use on the brake lines and uh, i'll just use that and then you can just literally pull that out all you've got to do is pull this little uh, split pin out so that's the subframe all off and you can see it comes off completely with a steering rack all the wishbones come off as well so all you've got to do is undo the ball joint at the bottom and the hubs drop that off the drop links as well you just unbolt them off the shock easy enough and you do the same with the tie rods and then the whole lot can come off so these are the tie rods obviously for the steering rack and they pull off and then you've literally got six bolts the whole way around so you've got this one here this one here and then you've got this one here that has a plate that bolts to the chassis that i'll show you underneath and then that's easy enough so you drop the subframe down like that leave the radiator supports obviously all the engine mounts and the, the front and the back one they can all stay on leave all the fluid in there and then you left with a nice empty engine bay so you can see how easy it is to get to the gearbox now so you can see one of the mounts is there you've got that one there and you've got that one there and then that back one has just got like a supporting plate you've probably seen that bolts to here and here and that's easy enough to get off as well so i just use my impact to blast them off so now all we're going to do is going to get to the uh bolts for the bell as in and then support the gearbox obviously when it comes down so when we're going to undo that top mount we're going to have to lean the gearbox down at an angle just to cl clear this chassis leg and it's going to come out nicely so obviously to get the subframe off as well there is a bolt that goes through to the steering column up here it's just a 13 mil bolt which i'll show you inside the car once that's undone that's easy enough so literally it's just this bolt here and that goes through the steering column up there inside there so once you've undone that obviously the steering column's got nothing to attach to but don't turn the steering wheel while you're doing this otherwise you mess up all the steering rack and the geometry so there's two bolts at the top here that you've got to get to i think that you can just about see that one down there these are 19 mils so there's one there and there's just one underneath this water pipe here once they're undone you can get to these bolts down the side of the pre-cat easy enough so there's one there and you get the rest from underneath so you don't have to remove anything else from this engine bay nice and simple what i've done as well underneath already 
these I've got bolts out of the starter so the back here these have already been taken out so that's the, that's a 17 mil these are two and 19 mils obviously the engine mount's been removed already there's another one at the top of this starter motor once that's free that's about where my hand is now then the starter motor can come out you don't even have to unbolt anything off the starter motor leave all the alternator and everything and the charging loom all connected up and then uh very simple job just to drop this gearbox out so last but not least, you've got these 15 mil sump bolts. You've got one here, there, there, there. So what I do is I normally take this one out, this one out, and this one out, leave this one in. So that's basically the last bolt. And then when you support the engine, and then you can like angle it down so that it clears that chassis leg, as I said. And then you can just slide the gearbox off. Depending on how strong you are, I could just pick these gearboxes off and pull them off. But sometimes you might need, you know, um, a stand or, a jack to put underneath it just to take the extra weight well so now you've supported the engine make sure you put some wood or whatever under there because it will crack that aluminium sump if you don't i'm doing it this way because i normally do it with an engine stand and hold the engine from the top i'm not going to do it with this one so basically we've still got this 15 mil in here now and all i'm going to do is undo this top gearbox mount here with these three torx bolts get rid of the gearbox mount totally then i'm going to drop the engine down with the actual jack itself so it clears that chassis leg and then once it has the right angle so it obviously don't fall off then you can undo that 15 mil and then you can literally pull the gearbox off so now you can see i've removed this top gearbox man i'm doing it a different way than i normally do it just so you can understand how to do it yourself like this i do normally use an engine crane and do it a lot easier than this but i'm going to use two jacks on it as well just put this bit of wood in there to support this um, gearbox so it don't crack obviously it's aluminium and this is steel you get cracked so just put something in there to support it um, so that's what I'm doing. So now I can just lift it off the I've, off the engine. I've just removed that 15 mil. So now there's no bolts holding this on. You can see there's already a gap between the bell housing. Easy enough now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift it from the top while I let down the jack. Easy enough to get to the ground. So you can see here the engine separated from the gearbox. Clearly you can see the nice clutch in there. You can see it's not that old. Shame about the flywheel. So it's literally just balancing now on the jack. So we can let the jack down. And that's the gearbox out so we can get to sorting this clutch out so we're just going to let it down now and uh, that be the gearbox dropped out so it's not a hard job as you can see hopefully you can attempt this yourself i'm just doing this a uh, more diy friendly way just to help you out and down she comes as easy as that so obviously make sure you've removed the gear selector cables and everything you know you've got a rear sensor as well here for the reverse light and the gearbox just drops down nicely balancing on the jack and you can see that's on the ground now so now we can just move this out of the way and we clearly get to the clutch with the engine supported by the other jack so if i'm just doing the clutch change like this i just leave this gearbox in situ so it's easy enough to just jack back in place instead of moving it out of the way um, clutch bolts here these are 11 mils get this plate off and then you can go i'm going to get the flywheel off normally you wouldn't have to do that if you're just doing a clutch change so you can see here while we're replacing the flywheel because it's got a lot of heat spots on it i think the flywheel is actually warped um, it's got a little bit of clutch judder on it and it's not the clutch itself because the clutch is nearly new so we're going to replace this flywheel out with a good one that i've got that i know works fine and get this one skimmed so when you've got this flywheel off it's really a good time to re be replacing this rear main seal especially if you've got a slight weep coming down here which you can see this has been replaced recently so there's no need to change this one also when you're doing these flywheel bolts back up make sure you put loctite in them i normally put red you can put blue in it but basically what happens is it acts as a sealant as well to stop the oil coming through these bolts and that will act as a rear main seal leak as well a lot of people will be putting the flywheel back on thinking they've got a rear main seal, seal leak but it's actually leaking through the thread of the bolts so make sure you do that properly well, so I'm just messing around with clutches at the minute because you can see here, this is the one that come out of it, the flywheel. You can see the state of it, the heat marks and that in it. Even though the clutch ain't even got no wear, it was really, really bad. So this one come out of um, my, my actual car itself with the Forge engine before I put the lightweight flywheel on it. And it was actually skimmed, you know, a couple of thousand miles ago. You can see how good that one is. So that's the flywheel I'm going to use in it. And then I'll get this one skimmed up. Now I've got a choice of clutches as well. I've got a few clutches. This is the clutch that come out of it. It's a Z20 LED clutch. It's almost new still, but because it come out of a car obviously with that damaged flywheel i am actually dubious about putting it back in in case it's got uneven wear on it you can see actually the plate itself is almost new still it's still got all the grooves in it it's done hardly any mileage but i've got this good c20 let clutch and now obviously we're going to turn the boost up on that a little bit we're going to be running a little bit more torque z20 let clutches can't really handle torque they can handle horsepower but they can't handle the torque obviously c20 let was a four-wheel drive car so it's different clutch plate completely 
So you can see there's different shapes there and it's made out of completely different material. And this clutch plate had only done, I don't know, 5,000 miles or so before it was replaced uh, with a helix clutch. So I'm probably just gonna go with this one, C20 LED clutch, because I know that works and I know it come out of a working car as well, absolutely perfect. So this is the cover plate for that, which has more clamping load. And just out of interest, this cover plate is the one that Helix use as their heavy duty cover plate. It's just a C20 LED cover plate. Uh, Z20 LED cover plate is completely different. It's got a different clamping load on it. Um, and you can also see on here, on the Z20 LED, you've got this like movable center here to take out, you know, vibrations and stuff. On the C20 LED, you don't have that. It takes a lot more shock. If you're gonna go to high power on these cars, just go to the C20 LED clutch. These are the ones that Courtney um, obviously sell as their stage one clutch. It's basically just a C20 LED clutch. So that's the one to go for. So I'm just gonna go for that setup. The bolts are all Loctite. As you can see, obviously I've gone with a blue Loctite as opposed to the red Loctite because these uh, threads on these bolts are very fine, especially in the crank as well. And I just find that the red Loctite is very, very strong. And if you come to like removing these, they can strip the threads. And if you strip the threads out the crank, you know the flywheel bolts won't go in. And you've got to replace the crank. So I just go with a blue Loctite just to be safe. Right, so when it comes to aligning the clutch, obviously the flywheel's on now, you can see. Um, I know not everyone's got one of these, but when I used to have a lot of gearboxes, we had about eight or 10 gearboxes that we was taking apart for spares. I cut one of the main shafts off one of the gearboxes. You can see here, so it comes in very useful for when I'm fitting the Z20 LED clutch. You can see it acts as like the alignment tool, perfectly fits in the splines, so that's all lined up now. Um, these 11 mil bolts, are 15 newton meters to do up. So once you've done up to 15 newton meters, you've actually fitted your clutch. So now we can get this gearbox back on. So obviously once the gearbox is off, you want to check your slave in, Danny. This one was replaced like a couple of thousand miles ago, so it's absolutely perfect. Just spin it and make sure there's no noise coming from it, no play or anything from it, and you know it's good. Uh, these release bearings obviously get noisy when they're worn out. If they ain't burst and they ain't noisy, they're absolutely fine to use again. Obviously once the gearbox is apart, it's a no-brainer to replace them, but I know this is a good working item because I fit it myself, and you can hear there's absolutely no noise coming from the bearing, so I'm, I'm happy to reuse that. So obviously because the clutch is aligned properly, the gearbox just slides on, you see just put a jack underneath it, jack it up, wiggle it a little bit, it gets straight on. You can see the amount of room you've got from this uh, passenger side well as well, you can just slide in here. You now I've put two bolts in the top already, wiggled it, you know it's all seated in nice. That's just supporting it at the minute so I can jack it up onto the gearbox mount in a little bit. And as you can see, job done, that'd be the clutch change, the flywheel change. Now, um, a lot of people obviously moan, they won't do anything like this without a ramp. Oh, it's so hard, you know, doing it on your back or whatever. It's not, if you do it properly, it's not. You know, I ain't removed anything. The radiators are all in here, the bumpers are still in here. Everyone makes everything such a drama. So just drop your subframe, couple of jacks, and you can do this job yourself. So I'm gonna carry on putting this back together. Um, hopefully this is gonna help a lot of uh, people out there that wanna do the clutch themselves, rather than going to a garage and getting ripped off, especially as they put in cheap clutches nowadays as well, and won't put in clutches that you won't supply yourself. So you've gotta do it yourself. Right, so now most of the bell housing bolts are on, as you can see. Um, all I've done is I've just jacked the car up from the engine. You see, obviously got that wood in there to protect the sump up. Jack that up. And then you can just reattach this top man and then you can drop the jack off and then you can start getting the subframe on and everything back together. So just, uh, I do these up so they're still loose so they've got a little bit of movement in them because they, uh, the engine and gearbox wants to move around when you start settling up these front and back mounts. So you don't want to do these up tight yet. So now we're gonna get everything bolted back together. I'll probably start with a subframe on first. Right, so here we go. After a lot of work you didn't need to see, obviously you've took it apart so you know how to put it back together. 
the subframe, everything's back together now. Um, the drive shaft on here, this short shaft, you probably see it's been replaced. Uh, the inner CV gate had split, and I haven't got a spare one, so I just replaced it with another shaft that I'd land around. Uh, that's a good shaft. That was brand new. That was off of one of my other cars, so I know that works fine. So I've re-greased it all up, put it back together. Um, you can see as well, I fit this Polyflex or Powerflex front mount as well. Um, this was off of an Astra, but they fit just straight onto the Sofia. It's exactly the same for the Zedlet engine, F23 gearbox. Um, and that just stops the front lifting up and rocking um, obviously because of the clutch judder and the flywheel being knackered it ruined the, both the front and the rear mounts so you can see this rear mount's been replaced as well this one here so I changed that one for a good one it wasn't brand new it only a couple of months old because um, I changed that for a Vibrotechnics one on another car so as I say I've got loads of spares laying around so I just changed bits over while they're off. So while the subframe was off, I thought that was a no-brainer to do. Also put this bolt, very important you put this bolt back in the steering column here. Don't, obviously, as I said, make sure you don't turn the steering wheel or anything because you're tracking to be out. Do that up nice and tight so that locks that steering column up or you're gonna have a vibration through there. Um, obviously that subframe comes through and that grommet lines up inside there. Just make sure that's all nice and centralized. So this is where the steering rack goes through the actual bulkhead itself. Now make sure this grommet is all lined up as well with the steering rack. There's a little notch out in the steering rack that the grommet sits in, lines up nicely. Um, when you put the subframe up and you push it up, I normally support it from this section here with a bit of wood just to take the weight and you can do it up a little bit at a time. <laughs> 